Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome again to the Computer Chess Championship 2020. It was a Blitz tournament organized a couple of weeks ago by Chess.com platform. And of course, we had in the super final, as always, Stockfish and NUE and Lila Chess Zero. Uh, they played 500 games in 5 minutes and 5 second incrementation time control. And this is one of the games. And I choose the game because of the opening slightly different than then uh, other lines, so I wanted to explain uh, some uh, new lines as well, because uh, I got some comments, uh, some people are interested in different lines in the opening just to catch some uh, new ideas. So this, I think, gonna be uh, very interesting. And one of the engines won with one of the sites and the uh, second game ended with the draw. So this was decisive, you know, pair of games as both of the engines have to play, uh, you know, with the both sides from the same position. So without further ado, let's see what happened in this game. Uh, we had prearranged e4, c5, so Sicilian defense, as I said, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes on d4, knight takes on d4, knight f6, knight c3, and now black have four main choices. Uh, of course, a6, Nidorf can be played, g6, the dragon can be played, uh, knight c6, it's possible, classical variation, and e6, uh, Scheveningen. So these four lines are the most popular. However, uh, we have bishop d7, and this is Kuprejcik variation. Uh, I show you one of the games of Kuprejcik, but that, that was lost game, very, very beautiful game uh, where Kuprejcik didn't have a chance to even take even a single piece, uh, even all of the pieces of um, Rafael Vaganian were hanging. This game was incredible, beautiful. If you haven't seen that on my channel, check over there, I really recommend. But here Kuprejcik, it was very strong grandmaster from Soviet Union, he was Belarusian, uh, but very, very strong. And he get a new idea in the Sicilian. It's not the strongest, not the greatest. Uh, it's behind um, after these four variations I show you. However, Bishop D7 has some idea. So what's the idea? The idea is to play D5 as fast as possible. So first, for example, what can happen is e5 kick the knight and once the knight goes somewhere for example on b3 um, so uh, in these games we have bishop e2 and now the main idea here which was not uh, played in this game uh, is e5 i would like to just to show you what is the main idea bishop c6 and then this knight can come to the uh, to the b6 and this pawn can be pushed so this is always the idea in sicilian once you can come uh, to the move like d5 uh, you should be fine with the black uh, of course if you didn't castle that also can be the problem but uh, but yeah that's the main idea uh, another idea is uh, Carlsen played sometimes knight c6, so Carlsen knows that idea also. And after bishop e3, he tried uh, twice. g6, you can get to the dragon, uh, just transposing to the dragon, bring the bishop to this um, diagonal, and this bishop gonna support the attack of these pawns on the, on the queen side. So this is one of the ideas. Uh, also, um, another idea here which Carlsen played was e6. So e6 or g6, th this are the main ideas here. However, Lila Chess Zero uh, and later Stockfish were forced to play Bishop C6. Uh, and this is end of the book and the engines are on their own. So I'm showing you the game uh, where Stockfish is playing as white and the first uh, independent move is F3. Very logical, uh, creating this um, this pawn chain, very solid. So uh, of course D5 is coming on some point, so um, this have to be played. Uh, also there is some pressure on this diagonal as well. So we have knight b to d7, we have bishop e3, and now e5. We have one game in the database uh, where e6 was played uh, for some reason, because uh, e6 can actually control f5. The game ended in a draw, uh, but uh, we have e5 by Lila Chess 0. Interesting is 
that uh, stockfish with the black pieces played exactly the same uh, and now from now uh, we deviate so uh, what a stockfish played now we have knight f5 i will just show you what lila chess zero did the white pieces so knight d to b5 was played and then uh, as this pawn is attacked twice queen b8 was the answer by by stockfish and then after um, a4 bishop e7 knight a3 so remaneuvering uh, the knight this way uh both of the engine castles and the game uh, ended with the draw uh, however here stockfish get the another idea and played knight f5 so as you see this is a little bit uh drawback of this so all of the idea is great uh the problem is this bishop was guarding f5 so the knight also can come to f5 and get this outpost it's problematic with bishop e7 bishop e7 cannot be played because the the knight can take on g7 of course so uh that's a little drawback however black now can go straight for d five and this is what lila chess zero does so we have knight b6 preparing bishop g5 now pinning the the knight and now h6 kicking the bishop bishop h4 and now we have d5 uh, g6 uh, attacking the knight immediately uh, knight e6 can be played and this knight gonna gonna control d5 so g6 doesn't do that much as the knight always can retreat to even a uh, nicer square on the on the e3 and the black pawn structure isn't that great anymore uh so this is why we have d5 by lila chess zero now d4 is the very serious threat uh, e takes on d5 is possible however after knight b to d5 uh, we're gonna have a lot of exchanges probably queen d5 bishop f6 can double the pawns uh, but after exchanging the queens it's not that bad actually for black black have pair of bishops as a compensation for this ugly pawn structure but the pawn structure is not that that bad as well so this is still of course playable by both of the sides however stockfish went for something much sharper and we have f4 so look at this center now something has to be done here uh, and lila chess zero goes for d4 and now the knight is under attack uh what to play we have knight b5 and now a6 kicking the knight and knight doesn't have a really great squares here however keep in mind that the pawn on e5 uh, doesn't have any protection so here stockfish went for f takes on e5 and now we have exchanging the knight so a takes on b5 uh e takes on f6 and now bishop b4 uh so the pawn on d4 uh control c3 so c3 would be the very very bad idea this is why we have king f1 and now g6 avoiding the pawn and attacking the knight finally so what to do with the knight uh of course you can try something like knight g7 but after king f8 how you gonna continue it's not that easy uh, actually the king is quite safe um the knight is not gonna be happy on g7 so this is why we have queen d4 saying okay let's exchange the queens then my knight uh, can jump back to d4 um but lila chess zero say no i'm gonna take your knight so let's exchange the minor pieces g takes on f5 and now queen b4 and look at the black pawn structure so uh, this is so ugly double pawns uh, however from the other hand uh, black have also the open file for the rook so we have rook a4 immediately so winning back one of the pawns uh queen has to be moved so queen c5 and now rook e4 very active position um, of the rook we have rook d1 now attacking the queen knight d7 blocking that attack and now uh, and also attacking the queen so queen has to retreat queen f2 and now only now we have queen c7 unpinning uh we have also bishop f3 attacking the rook rook e6 and now attacking this pawn twice uh so we have queen d4 now defending uh so we have f4 uh controlling g3 so for example if this bishop would like to come to g3 with the tempo with the attack on the on the queen it's not possible anymore so the bishop has to stay on h4 and not very happy bishop uh pointing on the f6 but at the same time is actually um defending that pawn of course it can be taken um anytime uh if black really really wants so for example with the with the queen and so on 
but that would be too slow. Uh, for now we have rook g1 by stockfish and now king d8 making a space to activate another rook and rook on g1 is still very very weak. Uh, probably stockfish wanted to play g3 and support this, um, this move. And now we have b3 so preparing maybe attack on a4 maybe on c4. Uh, we have rook h2 e8 double the rooks and now bishop h5 going after the pawn on f7 and it's not that easy to defend actually uh, this pawn. So in our game we have rook e4 attacking the queen, very active move, queen a7 uh, and now if the king goes for example um, to c8 then white can simply take that pawn and white have very very nice, um, nice, nice game here. So uh, not really the greatest idea. If for example, something like rook f8, trying to defend directly, uh, it's not gonna work as well because of the bishop f2. And look at this, there are a lot of threats already. Uh, this knight is pinned, so that is the problem, probably king c8 again. Uh, but again, it doesn't work because now bishop g4 pinning the knight again this way. And now, uh, how to continue? If you go back, that's pretty logical, as this pawn is not attacked anymore. The problem is, what white can do, it's simply queen a8, uh, there is not much choice here, queen b8, and now bishop d7. And after bishop d7, queen b8, and of course, white gonna win the piece. So, um, that's the one option, so probably black would have to uh, give up the exchange and play something like rook e6, and after bishop e6, um, f takes on e6, queen a8, uh, knight b8, again there are problems because bishop a7 forcing to exchange uh, all these pieces here, so for example b4, uh, just to control uh, c3 and a3, uh, but white can play a lot of things, the simplest one of course is exchanging everything and white gonna play with the, with the extra exchange, so should be fine for white uh, also in this uh, variation. However, we have b4 immediately by lila chess 0, so now a4 and c4 uh, are not really possible, but really what would you play as white now uh, if you think okay i can take now the pawn um, there is no problem with taking a pawn it's not the greatest idea the problem is that black now have very nice check okay so c4 cannot be played and now if you play king f2 you're gonna have the problems because that's gonna be the checkmate so that's the first idea you would have to retreat with the bishop but again this is pretty good for black uh, and black gonna have you know a very very comfortable game uh, now rook d3 can come uh, but then simply king c8 uh, just to make sure that the knight can jump to the uh, to the c8 if it's the the check on a8 uh, for something like that and now uh, after f7 just simply queen f7 and now black stands better uh, and also should win the game so very delicate and double edge position uh, and here stockfish played absolutely the best move in the position uh, actually you can pause the video and find this is very positional move but I show you already a couple of lines so you should understand the position slightly better while I enjoy my cup of tea Okay, ready? So the best move in the position, actually, it's the only winning move for white, is a4. Uh, and now the point is that this pawn cannot take en passant, because uh, if en passant is taken, this is the huge mistake, because after queen a8, a queen c8, uh, we're gonna have queen a3, and already you see uh, that bishop b5 doesn't work anymore because we have this c4. So black have to uh, sacrifice the piece for these two pawns uh, or play something like bishop c6, but then bishop f7 and white gonna win. This pawn has a lot of support, this bishop also will support and, and so on. Very difficult and the king is still in the center, so this is completely winning for white. So. Um, a4 could be played, congratulations if you found that move, however, uh, what next? 
Uh, black have now a very, very difficult position. Uh, these bishops actually control all the needed squares here. So it would be preferable if white actually takes that pawn and black could have some counterplay, bring the rook to e2 and maybe together with this bishop attack on g2. It looks pretty promising. Uh, so we have b5 first asking to exchange the queens as this queen is a very annoying over there as stockfish agreed so we have queen c7 king c7 and now bishop f7 uh, so rook is under attack so we have rook f8 and now the bishop is under attack so bishop g6 attacking this rook again uh, but also very important that this bishop is defending c2 at the same time so we have rook e3 now we have rook d4 going after uh, both of the pawns and now b takes on a4, b takes on a4 and now knight e5. It looks very promising. Uh, coming with the tempo closer to the position of the, of the king, also uh, preparing attack like f3. So uh, the bishop has to be moved, bishop f5, and now we have f3 as planned. And here Stockfish just ignored the pawn uh, and played g4. Uh, and now this pawn is defended three times, but look at the black pieces. Uh, completely uncoordinated right now, uh, because all of them are pointing of the, on the pawn, but cannot really move. So first we have rook e2 uh, completely blocking the king. So now the best idea for black would be actually to deliver the checkmate. So for example, jump with the knight to e3. It's not possible because the rook controls uh, c4. Also this way is not possible uh, because this pawn also is defended by the bishop. Uh, and also by the rook. So this is the problem. So this is why first after g5 we have bishop a4 trying to bring um, the bishop to b5 uh, and then the knight could jump potentially to the c4 and deliver the checkmate. So the plan looks pretty good. However, now we have bishop g3 pinning that knight. Um, and here is the problem, because what to play now? First, we have bishop b5, very sneaky move, because now we're going to have some discovery with the attack. It looks like very, very dangerous. Uh, and for now, the knight, of course, is defended. Uh, but it can be very easily refuted. So bishop d3, of course, attacking the, the bishop and the rook at the same time. So bishop d3, there is no choice. Uh, and now we have rook d3. And again, the rook cannot be taken because of this pin. So uh, the material is equal, but the position is extremely, extremely hard to play. So, for example, if black would like to first get out of the pin, which is pretty logical, and play something like king c6, then simply bishop e5, rook e5, and now h4. And as you already see, white gonna have these beautiful uh, pawns connected, the protected uh, past pawns. So very dangerous. White should win that easily. So this this is why Lila chess zero sacrificed that knight, uh, uh, but for the two pawns or exchange for the two pawns. So we have h takes on g5 and now of course rook d5 attacking the knight. Uh, if rook e8 trying to defend, it's not really possible because f7 and then rook has to go back. So rook f8 and then bishop e5. This is completely lost coming with check. So losing the tempo. So this is why we have king c6 forcing a white to actually take with the rook. So we have rook e5 and now rook c2 creating the very dangerous pass pawn. Uh, we have rook e6 by stockfish and now king d5 a uh, king b5 also would be uh, maybe more logical however it doesn't work uh, the point is that this king should actually uh, defend b6 so what could happen so for example bishop d6 with the attack on the rook rook f7 uh, and now simply rook g5 with the check king c4 supporting the pawn and after rook c5 um, the simplest way to win for white uh, would be king c2 and then bishop b4 uh, just pick up this pawn so this is why we have king d5 saying, okay, I'm attacking your rook, you have to do something. Uh, but now the rook can come behind the pawn. Uh, and now again, 
King c4 doesn't work. It's the most logical move. But after King c4, we would have simply Rook c6. Again, the same. King d3, Rook c2, King c2. Uh, and now Bishop e5, defending that pawn and also keeping an eye on this uh, b2 square. So now, for example, b3, Rook g5. And after b2, Bishop b2, King b2, uh, Rook f5, defending that pawn. Uh, and it's game over. For example, King c3. And now, very important, what would you play in this position? I hope you see that. First, you have to cut the king. If you take this pawn, that's gonna be a draw. That would be a terrible mistake. First, you cut the king, and the king cannot come um, to the to the defense. Uh, and only then, after king d3, king f2, and this is game over. This pawn gonna be, uh, of course, uh, the pawn can be blocked. But then king f3, and this king can simply go and support the pawn, while the rook can come from the f5 to f1 and cannot. Be be chased by the king so uh, white always will have one tempo to um, to win the game uh, so this is why we have b3 and actually the pawn can be taken but here stockfish played bishop e1 saying okay now you can go for the b2 but again b2 doesn't really work because we're gonna have rook g5 uh, king c4 and then rook before with check and not much black can do as you already see this is almost the mating trap uh, so a uh, king d3 rook d5 uh, and the king has nowhere to go king e3 and now what white can do is for example sacrifice the bishop boom bishop d2 with the check and there is only one legal move uh, all other squares are of course taken so uh, rook d2 is forced and now boom rook b3 the only winning move here uh, and after king f4 then picking up this rook and white gonna have extra rook and easy win so um, that was possible so this is why in our game we have rook g2 saying let's exchange these rooks uh, but this of course leads to nowhere so uh, we have rook g2, f takes on g2, king g2. And now if the king tries to defend the, the pawn, there is the problem that this bishop actually uh, controls all of the squares around and uh, black never gonna push that pawn. It's, it's just impossible. Uh, so this is why we have king c5, but of course it doesn't work. Uh, this rook is chased, uh, but of course that means only exchange um, the pawns. So we have rook b3 rook b3 rook f6 and this is actually game over uh, it's one extra piece and this bishop very important controls uh, dark squares and of course white have the pawn on the h file uh, and the promotion square is the dark so that's very very important here uh, this of course is completely winning for white we have rook g3 rook g6 defending now h3 uh, forcing black to stay on the on the dark square so of course uh, this cannot be pushed uh, so we have rook g7 but now bishop d2 uh, and this pawn is also lost uh, for some reason lila played uh, rook c7 but it doesn't really matter uh, we have king d6 uh, and here again lila for some reason give the rook for free i could play something like king d6 but it doesn't really matter uh bishop g5 and it's still winning as i said uh this pawn gonna win the game uh but in our game lila said okay it doesn't matter how i lose so we have king d5 rook c7 and of course it's all over um, g4 h4 uh king e4 h5 in the chess.com uh the engines cannot give up uh, they have to play till the end so we have couple of more moves h7 uh, we have king d3 now bishop c3 uh, king e4 now we have the queen uh, and now the fastest way to deliver the checkmate of course the engine always find the fastest queen e5 king d3 the only legal move and now queen f5 this is the fastest way as the rook controls c4 uh, the queen controls also uh, c2 and the bishop uh, and the king controls all of the squares around so not much choice here uh, we had in the game king e2 and after queen f3 we got the checkmate so that was one of the games uh, just reminder that the second game with the opposite colors ended with the draw uh, stockfish after 500 games he got 277 points so 54 points 
more than Lila Chess Zero. Lila Chess Zero only 223. So Lila Chess Zero, from what I remember, couldn't win a single game uh, from the moment where Stockfish NNUE was introduced or maybe uh, won some of the games. I, I, I'm not really sure, but I don't just remember. Uh, I tried to find some, some won by uh, Lila Chess Zero against Stockfish NNUE, but I couldn't find um, the game. So definitely Stockfish NNUE is uh, extremely strong and definitely number one in the world so if you like this video press like it for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other videos on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one